All right, so as we saw in the SN1 and the E1 reaction, the rate determining step is the formation of this carbocation. And previously we learned that when we have carbocations, we can have carbocation rearrangement. And so anytime we do SN1 and E1 reactions, we have to keep an eye out for any carbocation rearrangements. So for example, if you have this alkyl bromide and you put it in a solvent of water, you'll end up with a bunch of different products, right? So you'll end up with the alcohol replacing this bromine, the alcohol somehow ending up over here, and then of course the elimination products as well. And so you'll get a whole mess of things. Let's see how this occurs. So in the rate determining step, right, we have the formation of our carbocation, our leaving group leaving. And so we have a secondary carbocation. And so one option here is for this water to come in here and then nucleophilically attack this spot right here, and then de get, get deprotonated to give us this product right here. However, there's other things that occur, can occur as well. We can have a hydride shift which will then cause the formation of a tertiary carbocation, which is more stable. And then from here, we can have water nucleophilically attack. Right, in this case, I'll show you the deprotonation step. And then we can have another water molecule come in and deprotonate this to give us our final product over here. And so you can see, whenever you're talking about SN1 and E1 reactions, you have to be careful of carbocation rearrangement. And of course, we can get the elimination products as well. 